Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about controlling force of governors. Now when the ball in any governor is rotating, there is the centrifugal force which is acting outwards. To resist this force, there is an equal and opposite force which acts radially inward to this centrifugal force and this force is known as the controlling force. The nature of this force is to resist centrifugal force. Right? Now, in the equilibrium conditions, the controlling force is equal and opposite to the centrifugal force. Now, what is offering this controlling force? This controlling force is given by weight of the mass or the fly balls in case of what governor, weight of mass and sleeve in case of porter governors and the compressed spring and weights they provide the controlling force in case of the hartnell governor. So we'll understand this concept with the help of few graphs. We have plots controlling force on the y-axis and radius of rotation on the x-axis right the controlling force it is equal to centrifugal force which is m r omega square therefore controlling force is a function of radius right this a b curve it is the controlling curve the curve that we plot between controlling force and radius we call it the controlling curve and the straight lines that you see these are the speed curves so let's assume that one is the mean position right so the point at which the speed curve, which is basically a line, this speed curve, it intersects with the controlling force. It gives the radius for that particular condition, right? The radius of rotation for that particular situation. Now, if the speed increases, if we come to the speed curve 2, then we see the point of intersection and if we uh, plot it on radius, we see when speed increases, radius also increases. Now let's take one more situation that is uh, curve number 3 where the speed is decreasing. Now again, the point of intersection of speed curve and the controlling curve. We see what happens if at the point of intersection, if we extend it, we see that when speed reduces, radius also reduces. So this is the stable condition or the desired condition. What is stability for a governor? When speed increases, the supply of fuel, it should decrease. By, uh, and how it happens when the radius increases? When speed decreases, radius also decreases and it increases the supply of fuel. So this is the stable condition for a governor. This is a stable governor, right? Now, if we see the curve number 2, this, if we see this graph, again, all the conditions remain same. The controlling force on y-axis, radius on x-axis. Now, you see the controlling curve is a bit different here. So, let's see. A, B is the controlling curve and 1, 2, 3, these are the speed curves. So, 1 is your mean position, right? Now, if at the point of intersection of a, b and 1, if we plot it, we get the corresponding radius of rotation for that governor, right? Now, when speed increases, that means when speed goes to 2 and at the point of intersection, we see what happens? The radius increases and when the speed decreases, we see what happens? Radius increases. So, it is giving a totally undesirable picture. That means... When speed increases, radius decreases and it increases the flow of fuel supply, which is not wanted and vice versa too, right? So this is what, this is an unstable condition, which is not at all desirable in case of governors. And third graph, it is showing that the controlling force curve, which is AB, right? Uh, th these conditions usually arise in the case of spring loaded governors so what happens the speed represented by this straight line the balls they can take up any radius so this condition is the condition of isochronism right so this is the condition of isochronism where where the range of speed is zero 
So we know for the stable condition, the slope of controlling curve should be greater than the speed curve. Then the governor is stable. If this condition is not satisfied, the governor is unstable. Thank you.